Tonight on 2020. She felt like, like the school ugly duckling. I hate to say this, but she did look a little bit clownish. Until two popular classmates helped transform her. She was voted by the school, Miss Irresistible. So how did her Cinderella story become a grim fairy tale? She was crawling. Her fingers are inches away from a cell phone. Her two new friends and their boyfriends executed together. Four high school kids literally slaughtered, drenched in blood. I don't know how anyone could do that. For years, the case goes cold until Miss Irresistible reveals a secret. What happened? <laughs> Did she put an end to the click? And now, Elizabeth Vargas. It's a new school year, and in classrooms across the country, social lines are being drawn. Who's popular, who's not? Who's in the in crowd, and who's getting bullied? It is a rite of passage that can have unexpected and sometimes tragic consequences, as Mary Fulgeniti reports. Lake High School, just outside Houston, Texas, is the pride of its manicured suburban community. There were all kinds of sports. Our band was one of the tops. Kids of oil executives and NASA engineers roam the halls. A large school, lots of groups of people, different activities going on. And in the inevitable social hierarchy that exists in any high school. Who's the queen bee? Who's the wannabe? Rachel Colarudis and Tiffany Rao stood on top. They were the popular kids in high school. They were, they were on teams. Tiffany was a talented actress who dreamed of becoming a social worker. Tiffany was a very fun person. She was always kind of moving and bubbly and, and talkative. Rachel was into art and creative writing. And like Tiffany, she was blessed with the two things every teen craves good looks, and popularity. When you first saw Rachel Coloradus, she just struck you as this beautiful girl. I mean, she could have been a model. Rachel really, she floated a lot, I mean, but within her own group, she was really kind of top dog. The same could not be said for Christine Paolilla, a shy outsider who had always struggled to fit in. Christine was a girl who obviously had a lot of issues. Christine tragically lost her father in a work accident when she was just two years old. I had to go home and tell my children that Daddy wasn't coming home anymore. Her mother, Lori, unable to deal with the loss, battled drug addiction and eventually lost custody of Christine for several years. And on top of all that, Christine was diagnosed with a hair loss condition called alopecia. She would wake up in the morning and there would just be clumps of hair all over her pillow. Patches here, patches there. She became extremely self-conscious about it. She even lost her eyebrows and eyelashes. She started wearing wigs and started being ridiculed at school. Classmates would come up behind her, pull her wig off her head, and uh, it became a very big problem. She wore this red kind of wig, and she wore just a ton of makeup. She almost. I hate to say this, but she did look a little bit clownish most of the time. Psychologically, to a young person, this can take a huge toll. Hair is hugely important to, to girls, to women. It's a symbol of femininity. It's a symbol of feminine power. But then, after so much suffering, things finally began to change. Christine came home one day very happy. She said, Mom, I said I made two new friends. Who are the sweetest girls I've ever met? I said, who are they? She said, oh, Rachel and Tiffany. She couldn't speak highly enough about them. How much fun they were, how, how loving they were. Rachel's family, her sister Tiffany, mother Anne, and her father George weren't surprised she took Christine under her wing. Rachel was the kind of person that uh, always looked out for the underdog always tried to help others and because of this affliction that Paolia had, uh, Rachel really felt for her. And they laughed all the time and I saw such a change in her personality. 
Rachel was in her communication class, so they worked together as a team, and she took a lot of photographs of Rachel, and they had to put hearts around it. Dr. Salt says the intensity of the relationship was understandable. After all, Rachel was Christine's entree to the in crowd. That relationship would be extra important, full of longings. Rachel and Tiffany were a year ahead of Christine. Aside from their friendship, they also offered her advice, including beauty tips. And with their help, Christine transformed herself from an awkward misfit into a high school Cinderella. She was voted by the school 2003 Miss Irresistible, clear like high school. They did it because they felt that she was the person who they just loved because of the way she was, the person she was. Rachel and Tiffany graduated in May 2003, but stayed close with their high school friends. On July 18th, the two girls were hanging out at Tiffany's house unsupervised, watching TV with Tiffany's boyfriend, Marcus Priscilla, and his cousin, Adelbert Sanchez. Then they heard a knock at the door. Once they opened up the door, they were probably attacked within minutes and were met with absolute fury. What had been a lazy summer afternoon became the scene of a suburban massacre. The, the kids themselves uh, drenched in blood. Uh, there's blood spatter that's on the walls. There's bullet holes uh, from rounds that have gone into the victims and outside of them. And we had four recently graduated high school kids that were slaughtered. I, I can't even say just, just murdered, but literally slaughtered. Sergeant Brian Harris says Houston police were as perplexed as they were horrified. This was not uh, a group of kids that would be considered thugs or gangsters by any means. It was an earthquake to our family. It was devastating. People were angry and um, afraid. Nobody knew who did this. It was, you know, young kids in the middle of the day in a nice neighborhood. When you think of Rachel, what comes to mind? Just my little girl. It wasn't just the families who were in mourning. All people, you know, it's always the best ones. The entire community struggled to make sense of the puzzling and ghastly murders. Tiffany was the sweetest girl you'd ever meet in your life, you know. She never had a bad bone in her body. And Christine Paolilla's parents say she took the news especially hard. This photo of Christine had been found in Rachel's wallet. She was very upset. She cried most of the night. Did she stay home? She slept in our bed for three nights. She was afraid. As the families and the community grieved, police were at a loss. Despite the vast amounts of evidence at the crime scene, there were no DNA matches, no useful fingerprints, and no forensics that could quickly identify who killed the teens. On a case this massive, you go back to the basics and, and you look at your victims and you start seeing what their relationships are. The investigation would take time, lots of time. But eventually, a compelling image of the killers would emerge. It would drive Rachel's family to launch their own crusade for justice and lead them to some shocking revelations. People do some evil things, unfortunately. There was no understanding that. 